Well, howdy, y'all. I'm EJ, you're you. Welcome to my channel. The country greeting is because today we are designing the farm area. It's going to be the last villager town area. I'm really excited to get it done. I have a couple cool ideas, especially for those pumpkin patches that uh, everyone has to transition them into the winter. A uh, winter farm seems kind of uh, oxymoronic in some ways, but I'm really excited to figure it out. Before we get into it, make sure you go ahead, you, you just you snip, snip, snip of that subscribe button, you slice, slice, slice of that like button, and you chop, chop, chop on the comment box. And uh, enjoy. All right, so let's get into it. This section's already been cleared out, so it's pretty easy to start going. The first thing I wanted to do is really create a strong separation from the rest of the villager area. I want this to feel like you're walking through the forest and then you get to a clearing and that's where the farm area is gonna be. I really do want it to feel markedly different, um, just in vibe from the rest of the area. So I'm trying to put up these cliffs behind uh, Ursula later Mott's house. Um, because I wanted to really make it a strong separation. I put up the second level as well. Um, for sightline reasons, I am going to get rid of it, but you know, she's cute while she lasted, so I thought I'd keep her in. Now we're laying down the squares for the houses. We're going to have Norma back in this corner, and we're going to have Sally next to her with a small little garden farm area in between. So in between the houses, I'm going to put my pumpkin patch. I, th I know that a lot of people have the same problem that I do, which is that we have all these pumpkin starts and it's like, what do we do with them now that we're going into the winter? So this is, I think, one cool idea that you can steal. Totally go for it. Um, to kind of transition that pumpkin patch into the winter area. The idea for it is that it's going to be kind of a more sparse pumpkin patch, a lot more, a lot less function, a lot more... Uh, design, fashion, a lot more fashion. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot sparser. I put a bunch of different, all the different colors that I had, and I kind of spaced them out in this unorthodox, not necessarily following a super pattern way. And then in between it, I'm going to put some weeds and furniture and things like that. So I have like a hand cart. I have a little cushion that's been custom designed to look like it's a seed bag or, or a soil bag, excuse me, a hose. Just a bunch of different farm kind of things. Because again, this is more for looks and less for function. I'm also gonna put some le some weeds in around it because it's gonna look more overgrown because it's winter. We're not necessarily using this, right? We're not actually farming. So we've let it go. The, gre the weeds are overgrown. We're gonna put a tree in there as well later, but yeah. You know. Wake up! That's right, I did go to sleep between this, so. <laughs> Laying down the paths as we do. I feel like I've talked about this like three times, so I'm not gonna really go into too much detail about how I lay down the paths. If you wanna get the gist of it, watch the other videos, but the, the, the quick and short version is uh, outlines, fill it in. One silly thing that I did do with laying down these paths is that I set it all up and like made it all happen without moving the houses here. The Animal Crossing houses like give you an extra row of you know spaces at the bottom to put paths. And I don't know why I continue to do this where I'm like, oh, this is exactly where the house will end. So it's always a good idea to kind of move the houses first and then put down the path, but I'm silly because I like to do as much as I can without doing time traveling because I'm lazy and time traveling seems like a lot of work. I'm gonna start building out Sally's yard. So Sally is gonna have a flower garden. I'm gonna put a lot of my hybrid flowers that I won't be using elsewhere on my island over here. So she's gonna have a little shed area and then a honey and a hybrid flower garden. I'm laying down the rows horizontally because for the pumpkin patch, they were vertically. And because they're so close to each other, I want to make them look a little bit different. 
This is where I got this brilliant idea to put a tree in my gardens. I think it looks so good. I think it adds just like a nice little height element, especially in these really flat areas. Adds interest to the eyes or something, I don't know. I love the beekeeper hives. Like, I think they're so cute. I love that there's honey on the side, like honeycomb. Ugh, the best. Because hexagons, they're the best of guns, you know? Anyone watch CGP Grey? No? Okay. And now we're going to put down the hybrids. Again, I'm trying to use, well, I'm trying to use like blue and white flowers, I think, mostly in my island after this because it's going to be winter. I'm using a lot of like reds and yellows and oranges right now, but I think I'm going to have to transition those. So that's kind of why I kept this garden like this, because I'm going to want to use all of these cool hybrids later, but I don't really want it. They're not going to go with the winter design. I'm also going to put a honey stall here with the pot. I think it looks like it's overflowing honey and a pitcher that's been custom designed. This is one of the customization options, so not an extra custom design slot. Yay. I like to put these little patches of dirt. I think it kind of signifies to anyone who's visiting the island, like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to go. The path continues this way. And now the next day, bam, both of the houses are moved. Incredible. I'm going to try and give Norma a little yard using these rocks formation. So I'm going to turn her kind of rocks into a laundry area. So I'm putting some clotheslines, a kimono stand, a lot of dark wood, which is kind of what I'm trying to do with a lot of the designs is using dark wood. So I think this is a cute way to use this rock. I always struggle with the rocks and with the beach designs, so I thought making a villager area, <laughs> at least that's one rock I don't have to think about, right? And then I gave her a cute little sticking area with some tea. Over next to the flower garden, I saw on Instagram an idea for a Christmas tree farm and I said oh my god this is so cute so I am I was like I need to put it in I need to put it in so this is gonna be my Christmas tree farm the idea of it is that we're gonna have cedar trees around that have been frozen in various stages of growth um, which is gonna be fun for me because this is something that I've actually never done on my island I've seen it done on YouTube and I think I know how to do it uh, so so we're gonna it's gonna be a little experiment for both of us all of us Spoiler alert, I don't get it right. <laughs> so I'm putting a stall out front because I do want this to be kind of like a market area, like you'd come here and buy your Christmas tree or your holiday tree or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna put this cute little stall with the kind of red plaid on top. Uh, that is a pattern from Sable. Gotta love Sable's patterns, you know? And now the next day, they're starting to grow and I bought some uh, cypress, I think that's what those are. The little pine tree plants in a few different colors to put there. I'm putting cedar saplings behind the trees to freeze their growth because if you put another tree behind it, it'll freeze it. Guess what? I was wrong. I was wrong. It's not the cedar saplings. Ugh. So you have to put fruit trees behind the trees to freeze them. I don't know why it's different. I didn't think it would be different, but it is. The good thing about this is that I actually really like how the stumps look, so I kept one of them. So, you know, uh, all that work for, for one stump. Great. But yeah, I'm gonna take a second stab at growing these and freezing them. We'll see if it works, who knows. <laughs> Bam, we're done. It's a different day. Well, actually it's, it's the same day, but it grew. Look at the pumpkin patch. Isn't she ready for winter? I love the way that the weeds grew up and I can't wait for more of the weeds to pop up and look like that wheat. I put some sticks in there. I think it looks great. I think it's ready for the winter and I can't wait to see what it looks like in the snow. Norma's house over here, not really sure what to put in this area, TBH. I feel like a tree will be too like obstructiony in terms of viewpoints. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know. But 
Over here is the laundry area on the rock. Got the honey stand going over into the hybrid flower garden. I put a grain silo up in the corner because like, I thought it looked all farmy. And I think it, I don't know, it looks cool. I think it adds a nice, another element of height, especially in these kind of really flat farm areas. Okay, I also put a ca cacao, cacao tree next to her place. In between the farm and the uh, Christmas tree farm, I have this cute little secret area that leads back through the arch to a zen bath area kind of thing. I use the smoked bamboo uh, uh, customization option because I think dark wood is really like a thing I'm trying to do. I think it looks great. And now here is the Christmas tree farm finished. TBH, I'm not like super happy with the way it turned out. I want like a little bit more variety in terms of the heights, but it's a work in progress. We'll keep judging it as we go. But yeah, that's the farm area. We're done. We done did it, y'all. So I did want to take this second just to give a quick outro because this is kind of a monumentous build because now we're done with the town area. So from here on out, it's going to be completely new builds. I'm not going to be like, you know, adapting any builds that I, uh, designs that I had before into a smaller area. It's going to be completely new things. And I have a really, I got so inspired because I saw Rosie Horizons on YouTube. Check her out. She has this incredible island that is like a murder mystery. Like you have a story in it. And I was like, oh, I want to try that. You know, I'm trying to make my career in theater, storytelling, definitely a thing I love. So I'm going to try and tell a story with my island, with the rest of the island. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I hope you subscribe to keep up to date on the new videos um, and to see how this journey goes. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. And stay safe out there. Stay warm. All that good stuff. Bye.